Hello and welcome to Happy Vending. I'm Bill and today we're going to be installing this Niax VPUS Touch credit card reader on this AP123 snack machine. Stay tuned. Happy Vending. So this is the very first credit card reader that I'm installing on a snack machine. Our snack machines are in faculty rooms here in high school and the staff doesn't buy a whole ton of snacks, so it really wasn't worth it to me for a long time to get one of these readers and put it on the snack machines. The reason I didn't want to jump into the investment is these readers cost about 300 bucks, so you had that investment to buy the reader. It costs about $8 a month for the cell phone service to the reader, plus you're paying about 8% in your each sale to the credit card companies so you were going to be losing a lot of money a lot of profit just to get the reader on here however a lot of staff in this building have been requesting the credit card reader so i finally broke down and bought one of these readers now i already have an account with niax so i didn't have to establish that all i'm going to have to do is install the reader and then power up the reader and tell NIAX that it's powered up and then they'll add it to my existing account and then I'll be able to go in there and set the products for the product map and be able to start accepting money. But let's get started with this install. The first thing you have to do when installing your reader on a machine is decide where on the machine you're going to install it. You have the option of putting it here where the bill acceptor is. It has the bezel to do that. However, once you do that, you're, not, you're no longer going to be able to accept dollar bills. You'd still have the change acceptor, but not the bill acceptor. NIAX doesn't currently have a combination credit card reader bill acceptor yet. They are working on a reader that is going to fit over top of MEI bill acceptors, I was told by my salesperson, that's something they're currently working on, but that has not been released yet. They used to have a unit called the Fusion, which um, another company made a bill acceptor that their credit card readers sat on top of, but it was this third-party bill acceptor. It wasn't Coinco or MEI. It wasn't one of the big companies. So your other option is we're going to take off this bezel, and then you're either going to put it up here or you're going to put it down here. They're your two best options for this machine. The reason I'm not probably going to put it up here is it's a little high and somebody that comes in on a wheelchair with a disability would have a hard time accessing the reader up there. So I am going to install it down here on this machine. You just want to be sure that you're far enough away from the, the lock so that when you open this up, this turns 90 degrees. It's not going to hit the reader. So you just have to be cautious of that. But before I am able to install this, I have to unscrew this bezel. So let's get that off. Don't lose these screws because this is what you're going to use to screw it onto the machine, of course, without the bezel. We don't need this anymore, but I'm going to hold on to it in case I ever do put it in a machine where I need to put it in the, the bezel hole. It has a little plastic protector on it. Leave that on until you're done the install so that you don't scratch the front. It comes with the antenna, which you can put on the outside of the machine. I'm going to try to put it on the inside and see if I get a good signal with this inside the machine. And it also comes with this shorter cable. Except in a snack machine, this cable is not going to work, and I'm going to show you why. So I had to order the three meter extension cable, which you typically have to do when you're putting these in a snack machine. I also get the template that you put on the machine to mark off where you got to drill your holes. If I hold the template here and mark off the four holes and then put this on, this antenna hole is not going to be at the right spot, which is kind of silly. I guess they make this template to mark off on the inside of the machine, but if you're marking off on the outside of the machine, you really have to hold it this way. Be 
because you want those holes for the wires to be on this side where the antenna is. Make a note of that for those that are putting this in. Otherwise, you're going to have that big hole on the wrong side, and then you're going to have to drill it again on the other side. So I'm going to mark off where I'm going to drill my holes. Now, notice over here we have this little reinforced piece of metal. Now, to drill through that, it would be a lot harder because you're going through two pieces of steel. I'm going to go right to the side of that. And I did check on the other side. I'm still far enough away from the T-handle, even if I'm over this far. Since I'm putting marking my holes on the back of the machine, I can put the template forward. But we're doing it on the front of the machine, which I usually do. I'd have to turn this template around. So I'm using a Sharpie here, marking my four holes. I'll mark the center point for this big hole. They want a 13 16 bit. These other ones, you want a 3 16 bit. So I'm gonna drill from the back forward. It is a challenge seeing black Sharpie on a black machine. I suppose I should have got a silver Sharpie. Now I'm gonna start the big hole with this bit and then I'm going to use a step up bit to open it up. Good. Here's my quality Milwaukee step bit from 7 eighths to 1 and 1 eighth inch. I think that's as big as it needs to be. Now notice I have a bunch of metal shavings all over the machine. You don't want to leave them around the place. So Luckily I know where all the custodian closets are in the building, so I don't have to bring this from home. There's one very important thing you want to do before you move any further with this project, and that is power down this machine. Luckily on this machine, we do have a power switch right here, so I can power it down without having to go in the back and unplug the machine. Now, I was talking before about needing the extension cable for the card reader, and the reason for that is, unlike a soda machine, where you mount this on the front of the machine and the control board of the soda machine is usually on the front door of the machine so you only have a short cable run to get to the control board. On a snack machine like this all of the controls and the other payment device is here on this inner door and when you open this up you will actually see the control board. So you have to get the wire from this reader all the way over here and you just can't go you know, straight across because people are going to see it through the, the glass. So what you have to do is you have to either run it up above the door or what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it down here underneath the bin, the product bin, and then up here on the other side if you see here where the sensor, the drop sensor is, I'm going to go up into that, into this connector for the drop sensor, come over this way, in here into that little harness and then come up here and tie into where all the other payment devices are. So that's how I'm going to do it and that's why I needed the extension cable. I got these command 
hooks that are for rope lights, and these are for outside, so they're gonna hold on there really tight. It has a little clip there, so you run the wire through it and then put that clip on, and that's gonna hold it really good. Grab a little alcohol and clean the areas where I'm gonna mount it, just so that I get maximum stickage from the command strips. Under the door, and then one over here off the blue side and that goes on the machine. Hold that for 30 seconds. Hold that for a good 30 seconds. Now before I mount this on the front, I do want to feed my wire in through, through there because I won't be able to do it after I mount it onto the front of the machine. So I'm gonna plug in my extension cable and the antenna. Feed this through like so. I'll probably mount the antenna straight up here like that and then maybe put a, another couple ties to keep this antenna against against the wall here. Feed the antenna through the hole. Plug this in. The antenna just pushes on, it doesn't screw in. Push it straight in, nice and snug. Put this here, and then put that plastic door back on. Perfect. Now feed them through, and now we're gonna screw this on. Look how perfect the placement of that hole is. It's just the right amount of room for that. Now you don't wanna make these screws tight until you get all four in, because you need a little wiggle room. Just make sure you're going straight in and you're not cross-threading. This one was a little snug, but I got it. Once you get all four threaded, then you can tighten them up. And there it is. Perfect fit there. Looks good and level. I like it. I go under the door. Got one hook there, up the other side. I have a hook here. Looking at the length of this cord that they gave me, it's not long enough to put in there and run along there. I'm gonna have to go direct up, you know, from the door there. In fact, this is so short that I would not have been able to put the reader up above the keypad unless, I guess, I went up above the top of the door and then I would have been closer to the control panel. But since I put it here, I decided to go underneath the door. It's a little tight. Honestly, I think that NIAC should make this cord a little longer instead of the three meter, maybe four or five, you know, just to play it safe. If you're wondering if your machine is going to run a credit card reader, you have to have MDB. It needs to be MDB compatible, and MDB uses these six pin white connectors. So if your machine is running these on the payment devices, then you know your MDB. So let's plug these in. This is the one that comes from off of the control board, and then this is the Y that comes off of the dollar bill acceptor and the coin mech. There we go. This also has a quarter inch plug that would go into the DEX port here, but you don't need to plug that in. It's not important. You're still gonna get sales data without plugging that in, so don't even worry about that. Maybe I'm gonna put a zip tie for these extra cords just zip up these extra connectors that I'm not going to use so that they don't go bouncing around everywhere. I'm just going to put a couple pieces of tape for the antenna wire to keep it 
against the machine at the opening for the keypad. I don't want to put hooks in here because they might be too big and they might get broken off as you close the door. This is gaff tape, strong tape. Doesn't leave a real sticky residue when you take it off. Just close it up, make sure it locks. It does. Let's open it up and power it on see if it works. Just gotta make sure your wires don't get caught in anything while you're closing the door. I hear it chiming. Now it should come up, but it will not work until I contact my NIAC sales rep and tell them I've powered this thing up and then I'm ready for them to put it into my account. Once they activate it in my account, then it should start working and I'll come down and give it a try. You can see it says cash only, but we're powered up. We're getting the serial number. Let's go into the settings. I'm gonna take off the protective coating now. Let's go into the settings and see what our Antenna read is red 17. That is really good for being in the building here with the antenna inside the machine. So with a 17 reading, we should have no problem connecting to NIAC and for them getting this onboarded for us. It's the next day now and NIAC has onboarded my new reader into my account and it should be ready to go. In fact, I know it's working because today some staff members have already purchased things with their credit cards and I've seen in my NIAC software that those sales have been made. But just to demonstrate for the video, let me show you it working. Can you select the product? And I'm just using the chip in the card. Select the product, I'll just do 110, the chips. Please present your card or your mobile phone. You present your card again. Authorizing. And there we go, it's approved. Chips are falling. Thank you. These readers also take Apple Pay and Android Pay. You just hold your phone up to it. Please select the product. We'll do 112. Please present your Pop corners. Authorizing. Approved. Thank you. It looks like I need some more popcorners. They're a very popular item here, by the way. It looks like it's working pretty good, but I'm going to take you into the software and show you how you put together a product map for one of these. So here I am in the NIAC software and I'm going to go up here and show you my machines underneath operations, my operator, and here are the four machines that I have that have readers on them and this is the newest one on the snack machine that was just put in. Now the product map is going to be underneath the product maps tab. Now I actually cheated a little bit here. Normally when you get a, a new reader hooked up to a machine this is all going to be blank in here. And you have to figure out the MDB numbers for your machine that equate to each selection. Like on the AP123 machine that I have the first product at the top left is product number 110 that's the number that the user would put in but that's not its MDB number its MDB number that the machine actually communicates with is 272 so I would have to find that out and the way you do that is you vend that product and then you I would go into here and I actually started doing this I would go into info look in the last sales and you would find when you vended that 
and there it is 272 that's me test vending this machine I did a number of times with my credit card I did 272 and I did the one right next to it which was 274 it's not 273 because it's a snack tray so they skipped every other number if it were a candy tray it would be 272, 273, 274, 275. So once I find out that number, I would add that in and then put what product that is. Now they do have the 273. That is not gonna come up on my machine. I'm not gonna see a 273 because I have a snack tray up top. To delete the ones that I'm not going to use, I could just select them in here, these odd ones and then go up to map and then say remove selected bins okay and now it got rid of those so now I'm 272 274 276 278 I already added a lot of products into the program so if I go up here you'll see all these ones that I've added these are drinks if I want to just show the snacks, I'll go into the snacks category, and these are all the snacks. The very first top choice is, it's just plain chips, so I'm going to put that there. I don't have to update the price here. That will automatically populate. The price is controlled by the machine, and once somebody buys one, that will go up there. The par is how many products it can hold in that column and I'm just going to put 10. I want to put more than 10 there. And how many are missing? All 10? No. I'm going to say zero are missing. So it's showing it completely full. The next one over is uh, Popcorners. Clear that out. Go into Snacks find the popcorners and it's the spicy quesos once again make that 10 zero missing it's gonna take it to full so you sort of see how this goes it's kind of time-consuming you have to put them all in here now if Nyax didn't put this in here for me see the way I cheated was I called Nyax and said, I have an AP123 machine and they have a lot of the product maps saved on their end. They don't put them in here for me to automatically import, but they have them saved on their end. And he uploaded it into my machine to give me a starting point. Otherwise, I would have had to add each one of these, what they call them bins. And you would do that underneath map. You'd say add bin and you know just put one up here and I would have to figure out the MDB number say it was 273 say I put a snack tray in there and now I'm gonna put it back at 273 and then I put in this information that's how you would have to do it manually the only other thing I guess I could show you is how you put the products in there if you want to add your products you gotta go back to the main menu for that go under administration and go down to products and you're gonna go create add a product and operator you're gonna put your operator name the group let's do snacks and then you just put in a product name let's just pretend I'm adding in peanut chews I don't have them in my machine but imagine that I did I don't have to put in any price information, but you do have to make it either active or not active. I'm going to make it active and then save it. And now that snack is going to be one of my choices here, along with all the other ones that I've already added in there. And then when I go back to my machines, Notice these machines have names that I can identify them a little easier. You can change the name of your machine as well. That's under general information. I'm going to leave the machine serial number 
but I'm going to get rid of the machine reference number and call it AP123. Staff dining room. And then click Save. And then if I refresh this, notice the name has changed on that machine. It says AP123. So now that I'm back in here, you could look for those peanut shoes that I just added. And there they are. Now I didn't mention this, but make sure you hit save when you're done modifying this. Otherwise, when you leave it, you're going to lose all that information. and You want that to be saved in there. The only other thing I can show you here is if you have other machines that need the same product map, say I have another 123, which I do, I can go up to map and say save map as and give it a name. One AP 123C and make this a new map. Save it. And then if I get a reader for my other 123 and I put it in here, I won't have to call NIAX. I just go to it and say import map and I would pull down to that map that I just saved and be able to import that machine into the other one. Okay, so I finished up my product map, cleaned it up a little bit, turned off some of the columns here that I don't really need. And I also went to the machine and vended a couple products just to show you what it would look like here. So I vended one of these plain chips and you can see now one is missing. I paid in cash and it didn't show the price here although this one down here this KitKat I did vend with a credit card and that one's missing and it did show the price but it does know the prices even the ones that I'm paying in cash because if I look under info and last sales it's showing those cash sales that I did and how much I paid for them and the credit card sale here that was $1.25 for the Kit Kat. So everything is showing now in there. And I also turned on this PA code. And this is a product map that NIAX had that they imported for me. And it has actually the local machine uh, numbers here. This is the number you would actually type into the machine for these chips, 110. The MDB code is the code that the internal board is using to pick that product, but this is the one that the user actually sees, and these are all accurate. They all match up with the products that are in the machine, and I've completed this. These ones here that are zero, those columns are empty right now. There's nothing in them. These here that I didn't put anything on, they're my gum tray, which I don't really keep much in the gum tray on the machine except two columns of breath savers and that's why these two are populated so yeah everything's looking pretty good the credit card reader is working well right now and my product map is looking pretty nice since I last shot the video yesterday and installed the reader I did make a couple slight modifications on the inside and I want to show you I'm still coming down here with the wire but instead of going down here and underneath the product bin, I went right here underneath it this way to save myself some length on the wire to give me a little extra length. And it comes out over here. And how I got that through there was I just shoved the wire through like a, a, a stiff metal wire and then tied this cable to it and pulled it through just like you would fish a cable through a wall. I still tied it into this new clip that I put on here, but now this gave me a little more slack on the wire. It's coming up here. Now I had enough slack to put it in this clip to keep it tight up here, like so. Well, that's all for this episode of Happy Vending. Hopefully you know a little bit more about installing credit card readers on snack machines. And if you like this type of programming, be sure to help me out and hit that subscribe button. As always, happy vending.